Hey, I'm Sam. And I'm Rachel. We're the creators of Plant School. Rachel's going to be teaching me, a plant novice, everything I need to know about plants, plant care, and gardening, all in a way that anyone can understand. Yeah, whether you have never touched a plant or you consider yourself an expert and you want to just learn more, this podcast is for you. And though it sounds simple, there's actually a lot to cover. So what are you waiting for? Join Join us us in in Plant plant school. School. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 13 of the Plant School podcast. Today we will be going over succulents and cacti and how to take care of them. Um, succulents are a very popular plant from what I hear on the streets. <laughs> and a lot of people have them and a lot of people kill them. So that's why we decided to make this episode. And we also had some some questions about them on our Instagram. Yeah, I asked people what are some plants they wanted care guides for in our podcast. And so I kind of clumped um, this episode together because my, my cousin Karen asked about her, um, her cactus and her succulents. And then I had two other friends, Kate and Shelly, who had um, aloe plants or ornamental aloes. And so I kind of just smushed them into this episode. I know... Like, there will probably be things that I miss because succulents is, like, such a broad category. Um, But I'm going to try and really, like, hit on everything for um, cactuses, aloes, and other kind of succulents. So, yeah. Cactuses? Cacti? Or both? Cacti. I think it's cacti. Did I say cactuses? Darn it. Yeah. It's all right. Anyways, we appreciate those people. Um, giving us these suggestions though so we're excited to jump in okay so let's just start off what's the history of succulents and cacti um yeah so i tried looking up their history there wasn't too much but i did find out that um the word succulent comes from um the latin word succus i'm assuming it's succus succus (laughs) <laughs> we'll just go with succus, but it means juice or sap, um, which is referring to how succulents have like large fleshy leaves oh. that are usually, stop, it's just a leaf, <laughs> it's just <laughs> filled with juice or sap. Um, I don't know, like think of an aloe plant and how that's kind of filled with its um, its sap that it has. Gotcha. Oh, where do they come from? Um, Yeah, so they come from all over. So obviously, cacti come from more deserty regions, um, like all over the world, really. Um, And succulents, a large portion of them come from Africa. Um, There are some that come from Central America, South America, even there are some that are native to the European Alps. Basically, they come from all over. It is such a huge group of plants. Like, it includes, I'm just going to name a few, it includes aloe plants. It includes jade plants, which are in the um, Crassula genus. It includes um, Echeverias and, oh, Euphorbias, um, Calanchos. A bunch of plants that I've never heard of before. Really? Well, some of those were the genus um, of them. Like, Echeveria is a genus name. But yeah, there are so many. um, And then obviously, cacti are a type of succulent as well. And yeah, we're going to try to hopefully get good information on all of these plants. Yeah, so you kind of covered this, but what exactly are they? Because they kind of look different from your normal house plant I feel like yeah they are different they so they're they're all herbaceous herbaceous I'm trying to think but I don't know kind of like I mentioned oh I missed agaves agaves are in that um I have this big old long list but it goes all the way to include things like yucca um which you wouldn't really think of as a succulent succa and yucca yeah. Easy to remember. Yucca is a sucker. 
Um, but yeah, there's a lot of a lot of plants that fall under succulents that have these either fleshy stems or fleshy leaves that are just like thick and plump. Um, but yeah, we're kind of gonna be focusing not on like the yuccas and things that are kind of on the sidelines of succulents, but more so like those things that you see in the store. Like, and those are usually your echeverias. Um, I think I'm saying that right. Oh my gosh, I'd be so embarrassed if I'm saying it wrong, but. I have no idea, so I can't call you <laughs> out. Um, but anyways, these are the ones that you'll see in your grocery store. Um, and so when I'm talking about succulents, I'm mostly talking about just those or um, cacti, not yuccas or hoya, hoyas or calanchos. Um, although some of these things I'll be talking about can, um, can apply to them. But yeah, basically to answer your question, I feel like I rambled on. They're just plants with fleshy stems that have leaves or stems that store water and they are very highly drought resistant. Gotcha. So my, one of my favorite questions to ask is, is this an easy plant? or a difficult plant to take care of? Oh, this, I don't know. For me, I think it depends on who you are, but for me, succulents are kind of hard simply because I seem to always overwater them, especially like when I first got into houseplants, I didn't really know how to water them. And so I just assumed if anything was wrong, it needed more water and I would kill them. But they are very low maintenance, so if you are someone who forgets your plants easily, succulents are probably a great idea, because they thrive, I feel like, when you forget about them. Is a snake plant a type of... no. That's, That's a not good a, question. I'm not... I'm not 100% sure. Well, Should we I, look it up? I just think... I don't think it is. It's just because snake plants are similar, where you can just kind of leave them and... Forget them, and they're deserty. Ah, it is a succulent. We just googled it. It is a very common succulent. So yeah, like I said, succulents are like a very pro broad category. But we're not gonna really be talking about snake plants. We're talking about the very common ones you see in the grocery store. Gotcha. Well, look at that. I got. Uh, uh, that was good. Point out something you didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Okay, so I'm guessing if you can leave it for a while, that means you don't have to water it very much. How often should you water a yeah, succulent? Yeah, I would say water it um, when the soil has become quite dry. Um, like I said earlier, they do pretty well when they are forgotten about. Um, for your plants like your echeverias, um, gosh, how do I explain for those people who, like, don't know what an echeveria is? I don't know what that is either. Um, should we Google it again? Echeveria yeah. definition. Is there going to be, like, a definition for that? A succulent plant with a oh. rosette or fleshy, colorful leaves. Okay, so that's the word I was thinking of. It's like a rosette. It kind of has that nice pattern to it. You know? Like a rose. Like a rose, yeah. Um, so that's, these are kind of the ones I'm focusing on, along with I, yeah, I know aloes, yeah. because my friends were asking about their aloes and their cactuses. Um, but yeah, so if you feel like your aloe plant or your echeveria and its leaves is kind of slightly floppy, that is a sign that it might need water. Um, but one thing that's... Uh, I noticed one on my little succulent today is that if you overwater it, the leaves can literally split apart because they are so full. So you don't want to overwater as well. Kind of just Sounds water like when the yeah. soil's dry. Like a big old guy who eats too much and his button just pops off. <laughs> yeah, his exactly. Um, so what kind of soil is best for a succulent? Yeah, so with all succulents, um, including cacti, cacti, I was going to say cactuses. Mm -hmm. It sounds mm -hmm. it sounds fine. Maybe it's they're both used. Mm -hmm. I don't know. 
Anyways, well-draining soil is best, so that means it should have a higher sand content. They also really love good aeration, so if you want good aeration, you want um, perlite or pumice within your soil, and if you go to your your like local Home Depot or whatever, um, your local garden store, they will usually have bags of soil that are specifically labeled for cacti or for succulents. And those are great because they do have those things in them that will give them good drainage and good aeration, which it's just kind of mimicking the environment that they naturally grow in and they will do better in them. Um, and I've also heard that, um, to kind of go along with this question of what soil is best is that you can put a little layer of gravel um, or any sort of rock on top of your soil so that it will keep um, the neck of the plant dry when you're watering it. And it kind of shows off your succulent really nicely. Um, for example, I think I have some like little sandstone pebbles around some of mine in um, one of our rooms. But yeah, and the, it's always a wise idea to aerate them. So like with a chopstick, you can poke a hole throughout their soil to kind of break up the soil. And I think we've talked about this. Not everyone has a chopstick in their home. It's like the Did edge we of talk a, about this? Like the edge of like a fork or something. <laughs> yeah, a fork. I mm. Like the handle with that. Yeah, you could use that. How about like a, a what is that called? A crochet needle, a knitting needle. You Not could use those. Everyone has a knitting needle, sweetie. Everyone has knitting needles. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just... Okay. Let us know if you have knitting needles or not, people. That's... I can't think of something else that's super common. Anyways, a toothpick. Similar to chopsticks. We'll stick with that then. Um, anything else with soil? I think that's it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so your succulents getting bigger, do they grow a ton or so? <laughs> yes, I think it depends on the kind you have. So I feel like the ones that I've seen are really small. Yeah. Um, so when they're getting bigger, do you need to repot them? When do you repot them? Yeah, so um, succulents in general do like smaller pots. That includes your your cacti and your aloes um and if like, how small would you say? i guess it depends on yeah it depends size. i would say if it's like i don't know starting to hmm i'm trying to think because some of them kind of lay out flat and go over the edge of your pot but if you have roots coming out the bottom of your pot or you're seeing roots at the top that's definitely a sign that it might need a bigger pot. And when you're choosing a bigger pot, try and choose one that has about a half inch of space between your plant and the pot. Um, and that half inch of space is like from like the main stem of your plant because your echeverias, they can kind of spread wide. Um, and you, you don't want like a a pot that's too big or else the roots won't grow out much at all um anyways so about a half inch of space between your plant and the pot um in general i've heard that it's best to repot your succulents about every two years if they're growing really well it just not only gives your plant more room to grow but it refreshes the soil um and allows it for to have healthier growth and if you do have a succulent, or not a succulent, a cacti, and you are trying to repot it, that can be a bit tricky. But if you just wear gloves and wrap it up in newspaper, um, they can be repotted as well. Gotcha. Um, and then another common thing that we talk about with these care guides is propagation. Mm -hmm. How would you go about propagating a succulent? Yeah, so again, oh, this is like such a broad thing to cover. And we might, as we go throughout this podcast, we might just, I don't know, piece this apart and maybe we'll just do one podcast about aloe plants or one podcast about um, cacti. Yeah, we should because um, yeah, they're 
is a ton, but just in general for these these succulents, these cactuses, cacti, and these um these aloes, a lot of them can be grown by seed. They're very slow to develop and produce flowers when you grow them by seed, just because when they're juvenile, it just takes them a while. Um, but it is best to germinate your seeds at high temperatures. Germinate just means basically to wake them up. Usually that means by like... Um, An alarm clock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, an air horn. Yeah, there you go. Wake them on up. No, by like water, oh. which actually fits in pretty well with yeah. your joke. Yeah. <laughs> Dump water on some of that wakes them up. <laughs> um, but I would say you just need to be careful. If you are trying to grow these things by seed, there are a lot of seedling fungal infections. It's called damping off. And so just any seed in general are susceptible to damping off where these fungal infections will quickly eat the seed um, because of the just like the warm and moist conditions that the seed is trying to grow in. Um, but anyway, so besides seeds for propagation, there's a lot. A lot of species will root very easily by stem um, or leaf propagation. So that means you take a piece of the stem or a leaf and if you place it on top of soil or like a peat perlite medium, it will start to grow a new plant. So for example, if you're doing leaf propagation, you simply pull off a little leaf and this works. I don't believe it works for aloes. It will work for your echeverias and other common succulents that you see in the grocery store. Um, jade plants will do this. Um, what else? I don't... Cactuses, they don't have your traditional type of leaves. <laughs> so you can't really pull off a leaf for them. But anyways, if you just pull those off and leave it on top of dry sand or dry soil for a few days, it will um, develop a little callus over the cut and then it will start to grow little roots and an entirely new little plant. I'm sure you guys are very familiar with this. It's very common for people to do this. Um, cactuses often are propagated by breaking off pieces of their stem or they will have little offsets, little baby cactuses that grow on the side and you can separate them. Um, yeah, I have a cactus, or not a cactus, I have a succulent that I thought I could just snip off and place in soil, but I'm not sure if it's going to work. They're looking a little sad. I think it is one that produces by an offset, so that means a little baby plant will appear like by its side, and you can simply just kind of yank or snip it off and repot that somewhere else, so... I think I made a boo-boo with that one, but... Remains to be seen. Yeah, you live and you learn. Um, so, also with cactuses, um, cacti... Also, I looked that up. They're oh. both acceptable, although cacti is more common. What? Cactuses or cacti. Oh, saying those... Okay. Yeah, they're both gotcha. acceptable. Cacti more common. Okay, good to know. So, if I interchange them, it's fine. Yes. Perfect. Um, so last thing about propagation, um, oh, I have two last things. Okay. First mm -hmm. of the two, <laughs> grafting is possible to propagate cactuses. Um, it's actually, ah, do you know what a Christmas cactus is, Sam? Is that like a common thing? Your mom had one. Did she? Yeah, she did. It was a really nice one. She I, might still have it. I probably would recognize it, but I didn't know that's what it was. It was in your guys' house, not outside. Don't remember. <laughs> okay, well, Christmas cactuses are a type of, I don't know, cacti, but they're kind of they're kind of different looking. They kind of branch out a little. Um, but anyways, you... I actually learned that they are often grafted onto a different kind of stalk. So base of the plant is what a stalk is. And so they are put on these stalks to make them more decay resistant. So 
apparently a lot of cactuses you can take pieces of the top and graft it onto even like a different um genus of cactus and it will often grow people will do this to create like really unusual cactuses um or just like a certain kind that will survive outside so it's kind of interesting if you wanted to get into that and then okay so my last thing aloes um to propagate them they will produce offsets so those are just the little baby plants that come alongside the bigger plant and you can simply remove those put it in its own new pot and create an entirely new plant hmm. yeah sorry These that was have, such a long have answer a lot of baby succulents yes a lot of little they clones. they reproduce so fast which is something that's kind of fun about them you can create a lot of little baby plants with them get a lot of pots <laughs> um so where where should you be putting your succulents by the window indirect sunlight direct sunlight yeah so in general like house plants like we've talked about um they don't want direct sunlight um but for succulents they will want some direct sunlight and bright light um not all of them necessarily need direct sunlight but all of them do need bright light so they either need to be like right next to a window or like right in the sunlight of a window um yeah they're kind of one of the few that will survive in that I have heard, though, that you don't want to be placing them in a hot summer window. Um, it does need some, like, shade in those summer months when it's super hot right there. You need some sort of shield for them, whether you just, like, draw the blinds or something, just because that can um, take a toll on them. It can give them sunburn, actually, which is kind of ironic. Maybe not so much for cactuses, but maybe more for like your aloes and your other um, common succulents. I was say, what about the ones in the desert? Yeah, no, yeah. No shade. Yeah, no. They they definitely know how to handle that. Um, and then one other thing about where to place them is that a lot of them can actually handle lower temperatures. Just like in the summer, you can place them outside. Um, it will encourage flowering. Um apparently introducing them to that cooler temperature can help them flower later on which is kind of cool um but yeah that's where you should put them that's my answer okay um where do you usually get a succulent from so because succulents are so common you can basically get them everywhere so your grocery stores, your specialty plant shops, your greenhouses, you can buy them online. Um, I know that you can order them like in bulk online if you, I don't know, for some reason needed like 50 succulents in your home. You can do that. Um, they, they're they just very common, very easy, um, and really affordable in general too. So. Um. And then we'll do one more question and then we'll take a break. So this is another common one in our care guide podcast episodes is how do you fertilize them? What kind of fertilizer do you use? Yeah, so for your common succulents and your aloes and your cactuses, I would recommend a 10-10-10 fertilizer. So that's its NPK ratio that will be listed on the bottle or container of fertilizer. Um, if you're your succulent is in a lower light situation, which in general it shouldn't be. Um, I would say only be fertilizing it one to two times. They really don't grow much if they aren't getting enough light. One to two times a year? A year, yeah. Sorry, okay. thank you. Um, and then if it's in high light, they actually, because they do grow pretty quickly... When they get the right amount of light, I would say anywhere from like five to six times a year, you can be fertilizing them. And alo those are like, for your common succulents, I should say that aloes are a little bit less needy, and they probably only need it about one to two times a year. 
next week. Yeah. Um, and we have some blog posts about fertilizing and some YouTube videos. But those are for other different kinds of plants. We do have one for snake plant. We do. If people are more visual learners, um, if they've never fertilized a plant before. Yeah, I don't think I've actually made one about my succulents. I need to do that. We do have one on... Um, no, we don't. I was going to say we have one on aloes, but we don't even have an aloe plant. I wish we did. Wish maybe, list. Maybe someday. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to go through a few uh, troubleshooting questions. And we're back. Okay, we're going to shoot through these troubleshooting questions. <laughs> I see <laughs> what you did there. Uh, yeah, that was real corny, sorry. Um, so, how do you fix them if they get leggy? I did not write these questions. <laughs> I don't know where these yeah. questions came from. <laughs> I, I wrote them. These are common okay. questions. Okay, I thought maybe they were submitted by our yeah. viewers and listeners. Yeah, so this isn't really one that applies too much to your aloes or your cactuses, but with other succulents such as echeverias or jade plants, um, they can get leggy, just kind of like um, straggly looking. So, or they will like, I don't know, they'll literally like just be reaching towards the sun. So that is your first clue is that they are probably needing a little bit more sun. If they are getting leggy, they are just trying to stretch to get the sunshine they need. So for a lot of your, of your succulents, and you'll have to probably double check before you do it, um, because like I said, I made a mistake with mine and I don't think that you can just do this. But for most of them, you can just cut off the top, the top that you want to keep, not the leggy part. And you can place that. Um, you'll, you'll let it sit out and let um, the little wound that you just made callus over, um, set it out for like a day or two. And then you place it on top of some soil and it will start to grow new roots and create a new plant. Um, so it's essentially like starting over. Like, for example, the one I tried to do, it it was reaching towards the window because it was not getting enough light and it was just looking really ugly. And so that is why I cut it back and replaced it in the soil. For jade plants, they can get leggy, um, but you can prune back your jade plant and it will start to produce new little leaves along um, its stem. I'm not 100% sure on jade plants if you can place the tops that you've cut off back into the soil, um, but I am sure that it is probably something that they will do knowing that they will grow new plants just from their little leaves. Gotcha. Um, so what about dry, crispy leaves at the base? What do you do about those? Yeah, so a lot of succulents will get these just dead leaves at the bottom of them. That is normal. They're just older leaves dying off. You can pull them off and throw them away. Huh. Yeah. Pretty easy. Yeah. Um, what about bleached or brown patches or reddish brown areas on the leaves? Yeah, so this question is in cup and scene. Those al aloes, the cactuses, the jade plants, and other succulents... So if you notice a brown patch or it's kind of has a reddish hue to it or they're bleached, it's probably sunburn um, or it could be rot from water sitting on its leaves. Succulents do not really love it if it just has like warm water sitting on its leaves from you watering it. So to fix this, put your plant out of direct sunlight to stop the sun from burning it and also keep water off of your leaves. Um, you can bottom water if necessary and that bottom watering is simply placing your plant that has drainage holes into either like a plate or container of water and the soil will kind of act like a sponge and suck up the water. So that just keeps you from like dumping water on your plant and getting it all wet. Gotcha. So, um, one thing, going back to, so they can be leggy 
and reaching for the sun if they're not getting enough sun, but then they can also get sunburned if they get too much sun. Yeah, you see why I have a hard time with these guys? Uh, he, like, I think builds you... some sort of mechanism that <laughs> switches them out But, like, day. I feel like in general, once you find a good spot for them, they're, they're really low maintenance and easy. But it's just, like, if you notice these things, now you know what to do about it and how to fix it. And generally, they'll bounce back fine. How do succulents do in places like Seattle where it rains a lot? And That's a good question. They cloudy. probably need some sort of like artificial light to help them out. Yeah, at least through some of the months of the year, I would imagine they'd struggle. Yeah. In most, most northern areas in the world during the winter times. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, what about... Yellow, translucent, or soggy leaves. What do we do for those? Yeah, so this is usually a sign of overwatering, um, and it will lead to rot if you do not slow down your watering. Um, aloes will get dark spots on their leaves, like just like little dark spots um, when they are overwatered, um, as well as getting kind of those yelly, yelly, yellow, <laughs> soggy. Them <leaves>. yellow bellies. <laughs> <laughs> so just try and reduce your watering and check to make sure that your potting mix is a well-draining one, that the water will um, come out of those drainage holes pretty easily. Okay. What about shriveling leaves? <laughs> so shriveling leaves are usually a sign that your plant needs to be watered more. Um, oh, this is something we talked about with snake plants. So I guess this part does apply to yeah. them too. But yeah, if you notice that your aloe or your cactus is looking just like a little bit shrivelly, it probably needs a little bit more water. So over the next few days, just try and water it lightly. Don't go dumping a whole bucket yeah. of water on it. Um, what if the cactus is splitting? Yeah, so this is what I was talking about earlier, how cactuses and um your succulents they can start to split if they're watered too much so like it literally just like pops open and leaves a scar and so to fix that just water it less tape it back less together. often nah it's it's a lost cause it's a lost point. cause you just gotta deal with looking at it usually they will do fine like you can find like in i don't know like in the desert like saguaros you know what a saguaro is it's never like, heard of it nah it's like the classic cactus oh. with like the arms oh. that's yes. a saguaro yes. sometimes you will find them in the wild with giant splits in them um and sometimes they'll just like scab over and they're fine they live for years and years so it's just kind of like like a beauty mark it's just there just deal with it yeah go tell that to a cactus just deal with it um okay last question what bugs are succulents usually prone to yeah so succulents how are how do you take care of them yeah okay. no that's a that's a good added additive you yeah. know what i mean you got you got <laughs> me anyways so mealy bugs those guys are everywhere but they can attack your succulents um and like I always say, sorry if you already know what mealy bugs are, but they are just those little white cottony bugs. Um, also, vine weevil grubs are also known to attack succulents. Um, if you are placing them outside in the summer and you choose to do that. Um, I actually had to like look up what a vine weevil grub looked like. <laughs> it turns out you can buy them. I don't know why you would want to be buying them. Maybe if you have like a lizard or something that needs to eat grubs. I don't know. The black market. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew there was a grub black market? But... Whenever I hear weevil, I just think of Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh my gosh, yeah. I'm going to play my trap card. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I hope some people got that. Um, yeah, and then also... Aloe plants are prone to mealybugs, which are those little just like brown guys that stick on real tight, just look like a little brown bump on your plant. Um, and to get rid of them, 
you can wipe them off. Um, for the vine weevil grubs, you need to get new potting mix. So, honestly, I don't know. Putting your, your succulents outside kind of just sounds like a pain if you're going to get grubs. But it can be fixed with new soil if you really want to put them outside. Um, and mealybugs, those as well, you, they can be wiped off um, and then also treated with something like, oh my gosh, what is it called? I was going to say hemp oil, but that is definitely not it. It's some is sort it, of oil. Is it? Yeah, let's hear it, Sam. What do you have to say? Butter oil. Is it? Butter is it, oil. Gross. Is it car oil? I'm trying to find it. You know what? Essential oil. <laughs> this is so forced waiting. Neem oil. Oh my gosh, why can I think of that? <gasps> Neem oil is a natural remedy for a lot of pests that can get on your plant. They also work on scale um, along with mealybugs. Did I? I think I made a mistake and I described mealybugs as scale on aloes. You know what, guys? It is late in this podcast. It's actually not that late, but you know what? Daylight savings made it late. Yes. And I've. So, yeah. So I'm not going to go back and edit that out. I'm telling you now, though, that I described mealybugs as scale, and I am sorry for doing that. How dare you? I know, I know. What is this podcast even? It's done. That's what it is. It is done. I hope that was helpful. I know that was like such a broad subject and so much info. Like I said, we can dive into specific plants later on um, of the succulent category. Yeah, and I guess if people have specific questions about aloe or cacti or yeah specific succulents they can send them in and we can always just answer those specific questions yeah i know for one of my friends that suggested doing an aloe plant i think it was an aloe she said that her aloe kind of just melted which made me giggle because that sounds like something i would have done to an aloe plant but i'm assuming that was probably from overwatering. i wanted to mention that earlier that i i did see that comment i want you to know that it was probably just overwatering so if you want to try again and get a new aloe plant (laughs) and try not to melt it maybe just water it a little bit less and that would help but yeah special tip special tip we appreciate you guys um giving in suggestions yeah so that does it for this week's episode we really appreciate you guys and tune in next week for next week's episode thanks thanks for listening be sure to follow our podcast on anchor spotify or pocket cast also you can follow us at tinny plants on instagram pinterest or youtube once again that's tinny plants t-e-n-n-e-y plants if you have any questions or suggestions for future podcast episodes email us at tennyplants at gmail.com. Or if you're on YouTube, go ahead and comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.